It's the morning after the night before some of the greatest celebrations the Cheltenham Festival has ever witnessed, courtesy of two stories that the racing gods must have scripted themselves. The mighty Sprinter Sacra, of course, the Racing Post headline today, one in a million. That says just about it all. And the reaction yesterday of the crowd above the parade ring was quite special. And the Keithleys getting the first festival winner, courtesy of any currency. Today we go again on St. Patrick's Day. The clean-up operation is on down here in the Guinness Village, but there will be Irish revelry on and off the track here on what is a special afternoon. But it's not necessarily about the crack, it's about thistle crack on St. Patrick's Day. It's St. Patrick's Day and the Irish are here for the crack. But the crack is serious. Crack has travelled supremely well through the race and is now seeing it out in dour fashion. It's the new kid on the block, Thistle Crack. And it's Thistle Crack clear. A beautiful leap there by Thistle Crack. Thistle Crack looks the real deal here and will come home to win in tremendous style. The only question is how far Thistle Crack it is coasting away. The reigning champion returns for Warren Greatrex. Will he crack again? promises to be a cracking day. It really is, as you're able to see now, it really is just the most glorious Thursday mornings here at, uh, here at Cheltenham. And, and by some way, the sort of the best morning in terms of weather we've arrived to at the, the festival this year, albeit the first two days weren't too... too uh, it weren't too bad. I'm joined by Dave Neverson, who's going to reflect on the, the first couple of days and look ahead to, the, to today's action and tomorrow with, with one eye on the Gold Cup. And yesterday, um, given the outcome in the feature race with Sprinter Sacra, it was the result that the neutral wanted. Was it the result that the betting ring wanted? <laughs> well, it depends on the <laughs> yeah, point of view you're talking yeah. from. Um, look, the sun's shining on the punters here at uh, Cheltenham this week, definitely, Ollie. And, yeah, I had people um, coming on... Or, on Twitter, I was reading people on Twitter saying, "What's that idiot Nevison on about? You know, not a favourite one yesterday, and he's saying the bookmakers have had a terrible day." But loads of second favourites won. The biggest SP so far over the two days has been 12 to one. Um, that's not what uh, the guys standing up chalking up the prices want. At a festival like that, they need they need a, a result, and and actually now it's got to the point where they need a result in one of the big races. I don't think. Um, they've got a chance of getting out of this unless two out of the three good things get beat today. Really? I think they need two of them to get beat. And, you know, who's going to tell me that Th Thistlecrack, Limony or Voiture, mm. which two of them are going to get beat? Be because, okay, so let's go through each individual horse. Because of the question mark about his work going into a gold cup which is why they've come to the Ryanair is he the one that the don't you think that's to justify that their decision to go to the Ryanair that might, it, it may yeah, be but because yeah. of those statements etc would he be the what the, the the top of the list in terms of taking on well bookmakers are taking on taking him on because he went to four to seven didn't he yeah after he was declared he's now five to six in places and looking like getting bigger so he's the although mornings morning moves can be hmm. Um, reversed uh, when the punters decide to um, latch on our bookmakers to work out just quite how much money they've got on these horses. Um, for, for two, I think 4 to 7 he was put in too short and the bookmakers were never going to strike a bet on him. So yeah, they're anxious to get money into the satchel because they've paid an awful lot out. So um, I don't think he's weak. I think the Ryanair it, it always was the right race in my own view. I know some people differ. Graham Cunningham notably thinks he's a Gold Cup um, horse. Uh, but I... Um, I've always thought he was a Ryanair horse. They're in the right race. He should be a short price. Thistle crack. Yeah. What, what has he done wrong? Yeah. I mean, every run he's had this season. Should he, should he be odds on? Well, I definitely subscribe to the view that if he was trained by Mullins, he would be odds on. But Tizard is hardly a mug trainer. Yeah. Um, and and it's, it's got that look of being his season. Mm. Um, it, always, it already had been with, um, with Q card. Um, uh, uh, and this horse so far. So I, 
I think the momentum carries on. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Racing UK. It's day three of what has been a fabulous Cheltenham Festival so far. It's the St. Patrick's Day card today, and this is the turf that the winners on today will be wanting to grace later on. The winners' enclosure with this fabulous auditorium all around, people coming to cheer you into the winners' enclosure. There can be no more suitable sponsor for today than Ryanair. Of course, the long-standing sponsors of their own race, the eponymous race, but they've also taken over sponsorship of the World Hurdle. Michael O'Leary, who's in charge of Ryanair, he's also in charge of Jiggenstown along with his brother and they've got some serious contenders in both of our grade ones today. Alfred Azobo who seems to be clearly at the best of the Irish stayers and he was rustling up Thistlecrack in the Sefton at Aintree last April and they've also got Valsalido and Road to Riches who uh, are running in the Ryanair against the wishes of their trainers. Both Nick Willie Mullins and Noel Mead would rather be running in the Gold Cup but here they are trying to win the Ryanair for the people who are behind Ryanair. They call the shots and they have their horses here running today trying to win their own prize. But they're up against the surprise horse, Vitor, who was going to be running in the Gold Cup. The bombshell was dropped on Tuesday morning that he was only 90% fit, and so he's running in the Ryanair rather than the Gold Cup. What do we make of that? Well, it, it, it's hard to say. Could a 90% fit Vitor win this race? He was so dominant in the JLT last year on a sounder surface and on a track that clearly suits him going left-handed as well. Uh, could he be good enough to win it anyway? The vibes are that he's just not training as well. And how about the British? What chance do they have? Well, in the Ryanair World Hurdle, there could be no more popular winner than Thistlecrack, trained, of course, by that most popular of trainers, Colin Tizar. Don't move a muscle today. Make sure you watch all of these races on Racing UK. We can promise you exciting stuff. Welcome along for the ride, folks. Day three of the Cheltenham Festival, Paddy's Day, and a tremendous day of action. The World Hurdle being the feature event on a stellar card that starts very shortly. And the Ryanair steeplechase will get to see Votor. He was imperious in the JLT last year, ran a cracker in the King George, swerved the Gold Cup to come here instead. This should be just the ticket for him. Two and a half miles decent ground on his favourite track. Watch him go at 2.50. The Ryanair World Hurdle is next up. The feature event of the day, Thistlecrack, the favourite for the Tizard team. And he's going to be pretty hard to beat. He's been a revelation under new tactics. The patient tactics really working for him. He's improved a lot this year. And he went to Cheltenham last time just to prove that he handled the track perfectly well. And Votor, first look at him. He's just getting a bit warm, isn't he? Just looking around the girth straps, just the first signs of getting warm and just sweating a little between the legs as well, Votor. But it is, for the first time really this week, a warm afternoon at the festival. So the bell has sounded and the runners are about to make their way along the horse walk and out onto the track for the Ryanair chase. I do think that this is a solid favourite. It'd be really interesting for me to see what the reception of the crowd is when, uh, if and when Votor gets... Um, led into the winner's enclosure for, for this Ryanair, but punters certainly with it now. That will be interesting, bearing in mind that um, Paul Keeley in the Racing Post column yesterday was urging uh, punters to respond with silence with the tour uh, to win the Ryanair. I suspect the ones who are backing him down to 10 to 11 won't be silent. 
<laughs> this would be a bit, potentially have been a very different race if this had been the plan all the yeah. way along for the tour. Yeah, we'd say if you'd been announced a runner in this race earlier, you'd have half the number of runners here and not necessarily both the Gigginstown horses running. So I think it's probably caught a few people by surprise. And certainly when you're looking at this race a couple of weeks ago, an Alpha Rob, I think, would favour it for the race. Richard Toyles has the call for these two centrepiece races, the first of them at least. This is the Ryanair Chase. Let's join Richard. And they'll begin the turn downhill towards the fourth last fence with Alpha Rob in fourth place. Then in fifth is Smashing. Jossie's Hill, the white cap of Val Salido, improving from well back as now Vatour moves through to the lead as they take the next fence. Vatour over Virato Valtat is a 4 to 4 from the finish as they now begin the run downhill towards the third last. It is Vatour, pink jacket, tanking along. Road to Riches, last year's Gold Cup third in second. The grey Alpha Rob, Village Vic has run a mighty race is still on the premises and then Val Salido who's creeping into it for tour lands over that obstacle with Ruby Walsh still sitting quietly road to riches however hasn't given up the chase then Alpha Roth village Vic Val Salido they turn for home for tour and road to riches locked together here in the Ryanair Alpha Roth is three lengths back an inch of rain is let out for tour grabs it with gay abandon and moves to the second last breezing along road to riches Alpha Roth then Val Salido Salido, Vatour is over the second last. Road to Riches is three lengths down. Then Alpha Roth down towards the final fence in the Ryanair. And Vatour comes towards it with a five length lead. Steadies into it. It's over the other side. Road to Riches second. Alpha Roth, Val Salido, all quality horses. But they can't get near Vatour, who's going to land a festival hat trick. Another winner for Ruby Walsh. Vatour, different gear in the Ryanair. Val Salido up for second ahead of the same owner's road to riches fourth for Dinast, Gil Gamboa and then Takim Desoy probably the best Ryanair winner in history he hasn't got a long history this race but Vitor was a magnificent winner of the JLT last year and he is a magnificent winner of the Ryanair this time around he brings the first Irish winner in the history of this race, even money favourite Ruby Walsh on board, a 51st Cheltenham Festival success, a 6th of the week, a 6th also for Willie Mullins and Rich Ritchie brings up a 4th success for the owner as well, in 2nd is Val Salido who's just nabbed Road to Riches and you've got to feel for Road to riches because he was the one that was laying it down to the tour and sadly he's just faded up the hill and he's been Nick had second just taken from his grasp by Val Salido so it's a one two for Willie Mullins David Mullins on board third is road to riches third again in a grade one an excellent performance for him for Brian Cooper and Noel Mead and in fourth place is Alpha Roth the grey and he has run another excellent race for Dan Skelton his team in excellent form John Hales of course the owner of that Harry Skelton on board so I'll be interested to see the reaction that Vertor gets when he comes into the winner's enclosure. What he should get is a cheer because the horse himself has just put up a performance of tremendous quality, the best performance in this race that we've ever seen. He is a quite brilliant chaser and he has come to the Ryanair and just done that. Um, I think we can all agree that it was poor communication um, okay. and that things were being said that were definite, that were in fact actually mutable. Um, if the communication had been better, I don't think we'd be in this position. Yeah, I don't think there was anything nefarious about it. I think it was poor communication is exactly what you're talking about. It was never, you know, things should have been done in the in the build up to it, the, the near build up to say that they were at least having a rethought. Yeah, absolutely, that should have happened. Uh, but as to you know where the horse should come in in silence, I. I think it's about a couple of us, really, because I think the uh, the horses, this is about welcoming in champions. This is a great champion. There might be people booing, but it's a brilliant horse. I hope they're not. Well, the cheering's already started, actually. So I don't... Ooh. Let's hear it in. I mean, this is a tremendous performance. It should be welcomed. I know there's context to it, but we'll hear. cheer it's you know the, the, the cheers that are not off the Richter scale clearly compared to something like Sprinter Sacra would engender but there was nothing that I sensed there that I would have thought would describe as a negative no I think too many people have backed him Lydia <laughs> it's as simple as that he's a short price favorite you know plenty of money's gone on him and he's justified that and justified it well hasn't he but and he was also non-runner no bet in all of those markets all the of way course, along of course yeah and unless but, you but were from quite a long way out yeah absolutely so and, and and what a week we're having as well aren't we
mean, yesterday with Sprinter Sacra, outstanding performance from him. Today with Vitor, you know, you don't get it at every festival where the, I say right horses, it's, it's the wrong thing to say, but the best horses produce the best performances. This year, by and large, I think it is going that way to, to, you know, to a large extent. Well, when we spoke to Ruby Walsh earlier on in the aftermath of a 50th festival success, you said, I've not finished yet. <laughs> yeah, right, you were. Um, phew, that's going to take some explaining, that one. He was very good. Um, and I suppose I rode him this morning myself, and it was the first time since since the King George that he felt alive. Um, well, not alive, that's the wrong way to describe it, but felt that there was power there, that there was oomph in him. Um, you know, if I was training him, and I'm not, thankfully, if I was training him, he wouldn't have been here at all. He wouldn't have even ran really? the Rainer. Um, so and I guess that's why only Mullins is so good. He made a decision. He'd reshuffle the pack, run him in the Ryanair and see what happens. Um, it was a brave decision, I thought. And did he give you the right sort of feel from the outset today, the moment you jumped Actually, off? I was flat out early on. Really? Um, then when he got down the hill into the straight, he came alive. And then I was happy. Um, yeah. Village Vic took a chance down the back, and I got between him and Road to Riches. And from there on, I was always happy. Now, I wasn't sure down the hill. I didn't want to press on too early. I'm well aware of Road to Riches' of stamina. So I was kind of thinking, well, if I go too soon here and he pulls up, your man will be coming back at me. Um, and I, I knew Val Sarlito would be closed, and he was a strong stayer. So I was trying to keep something in the tank, but he just rounded off the bend and opened up like he did last year. It takes a special horse to win at the festival, but to win three times at the festival is something exceptional. Um, just where does he rank? I know it's a difficult question, but where could he rank amongst all the good ones you've ridden? Well, look, I've never hidden what I think of this horse. I've always thought he's very, very special. Um, that was brilliant today. Um, you know, he was magic here last year, and you know, hopefully he's been keeping that way. Um, in his build-up, regardless of the targets for this week, were you ever reaching the point where you were thinking we might not get him here at all? Oh, yeah. Yeah. He was not coming, I would say, um, where are we now, Thursday. I'd say last Wednesday, Thursday, I, in my mind, couldn't... Uh, I couldn't bring him for a Gold Cup, and I couldn't bring him for this. And um, I completely changed the way we train him. Uh, I changed the way we ride him. The tacky wears, and I changed. Uh, I threw him out the field. Uh, I didn't put him in a stable. Um, the only stable he's been in the last ten days are the two nights here. I left him here very. I brought him here very late, and everything was just. It was all last minute stuff. But it was. It was the only thing we just had to try something different because what we were doing wasn't working. It sounds like it's been a brave decision just to get here at all. Well, Ruby said he wouldn't have run him, and mm. I'm sure a lot of the lads in the yard were probably the same way. And I was the same way. I mean, I fully... Uh, I brought him over here, and I said to myself, I mightn't even run him if I get him over here. But if he went out there today and jumped around for a mile and Ruby had to pull him up, and I said, I was a bloody idiot for bringing him here. Well, that, that's, that's the way I, we let him run today. We, you know, you can't uh, win if you don't run, and I just took a chance. A Votor at his best makes it all seem so effortless, however, yeah, doesn't he? He does. I mean, he's, he must have a huge engine uh, to do that on the prep that he came here with. Amazing stuff. An interesting interview with uh, Willie Mullins there. Let's uh, move on then to the big one, the Ryanair hurdle. Grade one, of course. 12 hurdles to jump over three miles, and Tom Paul, two, the one that doesn't go. Thistle Crack is the even money favourite here. Cole Harden, last year's winner. 15 to 2, 8 to 1, Alpha Days of Bow, Whisper. 10 to 1 shot. Safia Duray, 11, 16s of Petit Soin, 18s Martello Tower, Kilcooley, 20s, 33s at Fisher's Cross, Bobsworth, Lieutenant Colonel, and it's 100 to 1 to Cara Bow. Well, I'm with Pino Bookmaker here, a joint enterprise, and it's shared misery, is it, so far today? Absolutely. Uh, utter disaster. The first day was a disaster. The second day um, were mainly second favourites or gambles, and uh, today the misery carries on. Uh, a bit of respite in the second race, but wasn't really a good result. And um, I think it's a case of uh, finding a bank in the morning and trying to replenish our funds because we certainly ain't doing it here. I can confirm, having stood, the, stood behind the joint, that these guys are real traditional bookmakers. They are 
they are standing today, horses. We do stand I, am, horses. I am trying to feel sorry for bookmakers losing, but it's hard. But There's anyway. very, very few of us left, so uh, take pity. <laughs> OK, we'll try, but I think you're going to get stuffed again this time. News from the paddock. Calford is Ebo has only just joined the parade. He's an extra circuit of the paddock before going out and joining the parade, and there he is in it. He was uh, going to be at, at least second when falling in the seft and just behind Thistlecrack at the final hurdle, his best performance of last season. You can see he's a little bit on edge. He put up his best performance yet when winning the Galmoy last time out for Maus Morris, but he is clearly wanting to get on with things here. Byron Cooper on board for Maus Morris, who has won this race previously, of course, with Trapper John. And at Fisher's Cross follows him in the parade, the winner of the Albert Bartlett in 2013, and third in this race the following year, fourth last year, a Petit Soin, who we haven't seen since this time last year when he won the Coral Cup. This is a step up in trip and a marked step up in class, followed by Bob's Worth, the past Gold Cup winner, also winner of the RSA and the Albert Bartlett from 2011 to 2013. He reigns supreme here. There is the title holder, Cole Harden. His entire season has revolved around this race, and Warren Greatrix has been very bullish about him. Kilcooley has got to the church on time. It was a rush. He's had plenty of setbacks. Charlie Longson was worried about getting him here. Nakara Blow is having his sixth festival experience, appearance here and his first in the world hurdle. A fantastic 13-year-old. Followed by Lieutenant Colonel, who last season had the best of the Irish hurdling, staying hurdling form. He's been second last time out. A good effort. Marcella Tower won the Albert Bartlett this time last year. Faster conditions he'll be encountering here. Safir de Ruhr was second in this race last year. He's had a breathing operation since we last saw him. And there is Thistlecrack who has got the preeminent form amongst staying hurdlers this season. Unbeaten and a real talent in his last three starts. And there is Whisper, the winner of the Coral Cup two seasons ago. Uh, he had a bit of a torrid season last time around. They tried chasing. It didn't work. He that showed signs of recovery in this race and then went on to lower the colours of Cole Harden at the Aintree Festival. And Nicky Henderson has been stressing that this horse has actually been pleasing him this season. It hasn't translated to the track, but then faster conditions has always suited Whisper best. So they're coming forward for the Ryanair World Hurdle. Time to join our commentary for this. It comes with Ian Bartlett. Third as they race now downhill towards the second last. These are well clear from Kill Cooley. Uh, Makara Bow and Lieutenant Colonel has probably been pulled up. To the jump, Cole Harden, uh, the green sleeves. The orange jacket is Thistlecrack. On the left, the maroon colours is Alpha Des Obo. Opertsy Swan in yellow has moved into fourth position as they jump that from Martello Tower and Whisper. But it's Thistlecrack now who's come through to take it up. Alpha Des Obo is only a half length behind in second place and is laying down the challenge. Opertsy Swan has moved into third place. Cole Harden is in fourth. Into the straight they come and now Tom Scudamore sends Thistlecrack on by two lengths and he's easily gone two or three lengths ahead. Alpha Des Obo second. Cole Harden Opertsy Swan. Swan are battling out third and fourth and then Bobsworth, but Thistlecrack is coming to the final flight with a five length advantage and he's travelling by far the best. Thistlecrack, great leap at the last. He heads up the run in now. Alpha Des Obo in second position, but it's going to be Thistlecrack and Tom Scudamore. He Tom rides him out on the run to the line and he clears away in great style. Thistlecrack has won the Ryanair World Hurdle. Alpha Des Obo in second. Good old Bobsworth has come through to be in third place and Cole Harden was in fourth. A fantastic performance from Thistlecrack. We could have seen a new era, a new dominant horse in this division. Thistlecrack has carried on with this, his imperious progress through the season and has won the world hurdle. Even when he favoured, he's been returned. Tom Scudamore on board. They jumped to the front two out and they made their way home splendidly and there'll be no more popular winner here with Colin Tizard having had such a tremendous season. He's got cue card coming tomorrow and now he's got this quite brilliant hurdler. Hats off to Alfred de Zobo because as he did at Liverpool last year, he has thrown down the gauntlet to Thistlecrack. He has pressed him as much as he was capable and he has come a long way clear of the rest of the field. He himself is a very, very talented staying hurdler. Mas Morris can be proud of that performance. Brian Cooper on board and Bob's worth. How absolutely fantastic. He was unbeaten uh, until earlier this season over hurdles. He's won the Albert Bartlett, the RSA and the Gold Cup. Up. And here on what might be the final time we see him, we don't know, given that he is putting his foot, best foot forward here, he has finished third in the world herd of Nicky Henderson and David Pass. Quite magnificent. <laughs>
Fantastic performance from Thistlecrack. We're going to be welcoming into the winner's enclosure another performance of tremendous quality. We have been treated today, uh, Vator winning the Ryanair in such tremendous fashion. And now this scintillating performance from Thistlecrack really showing what his aptitude for this particular discipline and as Martin was just saying there his versatility his authority in all different circumstances the straightforwardness of yeah. the horse Steve he settles wherever you want to settle and when he asked him to make head when he he took closer or went about second or third uh, yeah, from about four out he did that without having to be pushed he's absolutely you know, malleable he, he's, he's, he's got a brilliant temperament for a race call race horse he doesn't do anything wrong does he that's the that's the thing he, he, he's just a bus of a ride through a race. A little bit like the tour in many ways over fences. He's just travels strong, jumps really well, makes it look extremely easy running against the top horses that he can run against. So, um, yeah, such a dominant performance as that is, is, is one that we should be making plenty of, I think. Very much so, very much so. It'll be a it's a first world hurdle success for uh, Colin Tissard. Tom Scudamore is on board here and he's getting a, a rousing reception quite right. Of a performance of high, high quality. There was a spontaneous round of applause as he crossed the line up here in the parade ring, and now he is getting the warm reception. The performance such as this, a horse such as this, deserves. After racing today here at Cheltenham, there's a sale on, and um, there's a horse who's just rocketed in value, <laughs> and that she'd have been pretty value, valuable anyway, and that is this a crack's full sister. Yeah, Ollie Bell just told me that. And, uh, <laughs> yes, I think whoever owns that's going to be uh, even more happy. Yeah, absolutely. How uh, much change have you got? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the underbidders. <laughs> <laughs> by quite some margin, I'd imagine. By quite some margin, yeah. Yeah, I don't think £32 will go very far. <laughs> We're just getting our breath back following Thistlecrack's devastating success in the world hurdle. Um, Tom, just talk us through that. There never appeared to be a moment's doubt. Yeah. And you all sat there thinking, thinking, thinking Vitor was good, didn't he? <laughs> you no, know, he was superb, wasn't he? It was, I mean, it was just... Uh, all the way through, he's travelled, taken me, and jumped superbly, and uh, that was a, that was a thrill of a lifetime. You know, we, I've always held him in very high regard, um, and you know, he's just improved at every time. Colin, Joe, Pauline, Kim—they've all done a wonderful job with him. Uh, obviously, you know, getting him here in this order, and the way he's kept on improving with every run, um, it's just you know, it's just a joy. And you mentioned his jumping; that has been one of the key features of his performances this winter. Yeah, he's good, isn't he? He's just—he just, he's just a, makes it. He jumps because he's a proper horse, and I'm able to travel and can use him all the way through. And oh, it's just—he's. He, if you're enjoying watching it, you try riding him. <laughs> Final question, the best you've ridden? Uh, yeah, he's got to be bang up there, what he's achieved. I've been very lucky to ride some good horses. You know, Giant Bolster, Grand Cru, um, but you know, he's, 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 yeah, he's the best. Away. Well done. Thank you. Watch live racing now on RacingTV.com.